Well, just want to say shalom to all of my family and friends. Um, you are with Tony and Bill, um, Torah Talks with Tony and Bill. Kind of want to release something or at least start on this release. And um, Papa B and I want, want to come back later, maybe on Shabbat and, and talk about it. So I want to I want to make sure that I at least release this prophetic word that I believe the Lord gave me um, on the 28th. And so when the Lord does that and when we talk about prophetic words, I think we've talked about before when we talk about prophecy or, or the prophetic ministry in this sense, we're not really talking about predictions. We're not really talking about looking forward into the future and predicting someone's life. We're really talking about the prophetic alignment, calling people, calling the people of, of, of Yeshua into alignment with, with covenant, with kingdom. And so this is really what this is about. And I want to just give you this word that came. I was talking to my family and this word began to materialize. And then later the Lord continued to speak to me about this word. I call this word mass circumcision, global ecclesiastical circumcision. And, um, and I'll read it, and then I'll, um, I'll let Papa B just kind of talk a little bit as an intro to what we want to get into when we come back on Sabbath and really start to discuss this a little bit further. So it says, I believe the church, if you would, have entered a time of mass circumcision, like unto that which took place during the time of Moses after the mass deliverance of the people, of the Hebrew people from Egypt. The effect will yield a similar environment to that which surrounded the time of Israel's circumcision. Kingdom culture will emerge with a fiery zeal that will consume the circumcised. The covenant of Abba with his people will be felt or experienced throughout the world. The people of Yah will arise from the circumcision type movement with a passion for Yeshua that will energize a movement similar to the Jesus movement under sanctification. It will trigger more hatred from the world and false religious systems and bring about some of the first stages of persecution on a global unprecedented stage. The body of Yeshua will thrive and unite to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the nations of the world. That's the word that the Lord gave me. I want Papa B to talk a little bit about this because I noticed that this particular word came out of the out of the 13th Parsha, which is uh, Shemot. And I want probably B to talk about because I, I looked at how it's nestled between two Parshas. And I think there is there's revelation in that. I think there is even a prophetic message in that. So uh, probably B, if you would, uh, circumcision, first of all, um, that's the word that stood out to me in this whole thing. And when I view circumcision, you know, today's circumcision is not like what they went through back in, in the day in, in uh, ancient Israel. So we, but I would like to talk about circumcision and what that might look like today in terms of the body being prepared to move forward. Well, and Tony, if, if, if we think back, and we let the strength and the power of, of the Torah, the, the words of the, of the living God, wash over us, we can see that there's this great, beautiful drama being played out. And circumcision is not just introduced willy-nilly. It's part of a process. And the process it's, that it is introduced with it is the cutting of covenant. And the cutting of covenant, uh, not from the standpoint of how can one man be blessed or how can one people be blessed, but how can heaven invade earth? And through what, uh, what methodology, through what surrenders, through what submissions can uh, heaven begin to have its way? What does self-denial look like for a greater purpose? And, and, and circumcision is a form of self-denial that comes as you take on and you appropriate either for yourself or for your lineage, your children after you. On the eighth day, the son is born and you, you circumcise the child on the eighth day because you are introducing that child to the covenant of God, this downdraft of heaven that he desires to release upon the earth, and it will make you into the most glorious person you could possibly imagine, but it will also make you a servant of something much greater than you've ever been. And so if we understand circumcision, it is not just introduced to the world as being some sort of a neat little sign or a unique uh, symbol. 
what it is is a taking into our flesh, into our being of the covenant of God and surrendering to it for ourselves and for our generations to come after us, the lineage that will flow from us in our reproductive organ as a matter of fact is where this is begins to take place and that we're going to surrender to that plan, that downdraft from heaven and let it take it us wherever it wants to take us and let it do with us whatever it wants to do and let us let it bind us into this covenant downdraft so we won't do our own thing and we won't uh, do what seems right in our own eyes, but into the contrary, we will begin to release the energy of heaven because we are surrendered to its power and its beauty. Now, so when we see the circumcision as being what you're, you're feeling, you're sensing in the atmosphere, a prophetic download or a prophetic downdraft of circumcision, it doesn't come just by itself. It comes with the covenant. And now we can understand why this is a season in which this uh, this circumcision, this mass circumcision that you reference in the, in the vision is coming because what we are doing is reawakening to covenant, reawakening to self-denial, reawakening to surrender to the downdraft and the energy of heaven and willing to not only commit ourselves and our lives, but our households after us to that purpose. And that will transform the atmosphere in the world. Wow. That's that's a little bit of what we want to get into uh, when we come back on, on Sabbath. Here's the reason we want to do this. Um, I believe that, you know, before this particular release of this prophetic release, um, the Lord showed me how he was going to release this wind of change into the earth and that with that would come his energy uh, that would produce courage to step into this change process. And that was right before, that was, we was coming out of awe and we were just getting ready to start this whole season, the, these fall uh, Moedim. And, and I've seen that. I've actually seen this energy, this creative energy coming into the body. I've heard the voices of people crying out as a result of that energy going forth. So I know that the Lord is doing that. And now he's saying, um, get ready for this mass circumcision, a, 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 a major move in the earth. And I really believe that as we prepare um, for these seasons, if we would just, if we would just lock in um, to the Lord and hear what he's saying and embrace, engage and hear what he's saying, I believe we, we, we will be a part of that. One of the things that I heard when you was talking about covenant is identity, right? Yeah. And so the, the, people, the people of Israel at this point, the Hebrew people, they were, it was time. It was time for them to step into this identity that Abba had placed on them. And there is a, uh, there is a separation that comes with that. And I think even with the separation, the separation can cause some of these reactions that we see in the earth in terms of people walking into Jewish synagogues and, and so on and so forth and, and starting that type of thing. I think those are reactions to the, the call that's on the people of God to step into these identities and embrace who they are and begin to live that out on, on, on this stage. And I, I hesitate to speak too quickly of a very painful event uh, that is still being uh, suffered uh, through by the people in Pittsburgh. However, just to hopefully understand everything that God allows to have happen has a glorious purpose to it and will have all things work together. He works all things together for good. Yes, even this, and it doesn't look like it right now. It feels so bad. It hurts so desperately to see this happen. However, if we understand the circumstances of what was happening, when the shooter stepped into that synagogue, it was uh, a celebration of a brit milah, a circumcision, and the new name, the providing of the new name, the announcement of the new name of this child that was going to carry the covenant into another generation. And so it was, this is, per, you know, I hate to use the term prophetic loosely, but it, it is a, a picture, an illustration. Obviously, there will be, uh, those who are against this process, who try to stop this process, who find every reason to, to uh, attack it in some way. Just like this shooter, this poor deceived man who, who did what he did, uh, he was merely acting on the, uh, 
on the encouragement of, of other forces, and we, we, we know that. So now the issue is, okay, we will understand there will, as this mass circumcision, as this renaming, the new identity, taking on this new identity, uh, embracing the covenant, the self-denial that comes with it, the empowerment that comes with it, the passion that goes with it. When all these things begin to take place, yes, there will be a reaction, but the reaction in itself tells you the power of it. How much resistance you get will tell you how much power is in it. And that is why, you know, I'm excited about the word that the uh, Holy One's given you, Tony, and, and we can't wait to see how it plays out, realizing it's this time for wisdom, not just exuberation. This is a time to, to move uh, only as the Holy One leads us, but to move every time the Holy One leads us. And I think a lot of times we think of a, of a coming of a, of, a, of a release of energy, a release of power from heaven, and we think signs and wonders and miracles and I have no doubt signs and wonders and miracles have become a part of it. As you mentioned, the reference of the, of the phasing, it was between Shemot and Vaera, the 13th and the 14th parshas from the early parts of Exodus. Well, we're about to see a release of significant power and energy. We're going to see the miracles take place. We're going to see the transformation. But what we most understand, need to understand is that that power was not just a show of power. It was a wooing and a courtship of a people that would break free, that would come forth desiring to serve the Lord God, not because just because they wanted to get free, not because, you know, that. They wanted to serve the Lord God because he had shown himself good and beautiful and powerful, and they wanted to be ca caught up and just sucked up into the energy. And so I think from the standpoint of, of where we are, we are in that Brit Milah season, that new identity is being given to us as the body across the world. And yes, there will be some resistance to it. As a matter of fact, there will be some, some adversity that goes with it. But the power in it will be reflected by the animosity against it. Wow. That's all we have time for. We want to come back on um, Shabbat and talk more about Brit Milah. We want to talk more about circumcision. And um, so we just invite you to join myself, Papa and B, um, with uh, Torah Talks with Tony and Bill.